We're going to look at a vintage piece of equipment by the Radio Corporation of America. This is a console stereo made by RCA in 1972. And this one has a problem. It seemed to have forgotten the words. In other words, it hums. Let's check it out. This is an RCA Q100 AM FM system. This came out of a console. Hence why just the chassis here. Because the console itself is about 8 feet long. Nice beautiful wooden console that uh, a client called me up and said we need it fixed. I said what's it doing? They said what well, hums. I said oh you know why it hums? They said why? I said because it doesn't know the words. But seriously it's doing more than humming. In fact it's tripping the circuit breaker on the back as soon as, as, soon as power is applied. It hums and it kicks the breaker. So we have a problem. So I wasn't going to service it in their house. We pull the chassis and bring it back to the shop. So here's the the business side of this. It's all solid state. I know some of you were probably hoping it was going to be a tube unit. I was kind of hoping that too, but nope. No such luck. This one is a solid state unit. And uh, the radio is here. It's all a lot of it. Well, there's some circuit boards in there, but there is some point to point wiring as well. And uh, I believe the amplifier is here. This has got the output transistors are on the back of this. Speakers go there. I believe these are the output transistors. I've never worked on one of these things before. But uh, I'm pretty sure that this is the amplifier board here. It's on here. And these are the output transistors. One there. And another one over here. And there's probably some more underneath here. But I could be wrong. But I think that's what they are. I don't have any data on this thing at the moment. But let's uh, get the power cord plugged in. And I'll put it on my current limiter. And we'll uh, see what it does. Okay, I've got the unit plugged into the current limiting light bulb. And I've got power applied to this. I don't have the power turned on yet. Let's observe what happens. I'll just get a shot of the bulb here. And we will turn on the power. And then we turn on the power. Yeah. We got a problem, Houston. We have a major short. So let's just uh, do a couple quick tests here. We'll just test across the main filter capacitor, see whether it's shorted. It's a good indication that there's a short. There's a short here, so let's disconnect the red wires from the filter capacitor and see whether the, the problem is a shorted filter. This filter is dated September 29th, 1972. So you know that this is probably an original part. So let's just cut it out of the circuit and see whether this is where the fault is. So I'll just take the two red wires off here and we'll measure the cap and see whether it's still got a short. That'll tell me whether the problem's in the cap or whether the problem's in the amp or whether the problem's in the power supply. And it is no longer shorting. If we go into capacitor measurement mode, we can actually measure the microfarads of this capacitor. We'll make sure it's discharged. Thirty five hundred microfarads. This is rated at three thousand at sixty three volts. This capacitor is good. Where's our short? Is our short into the amp side or is our short into the power supply? We'll just ground one side and we'll measure the side going to the amp. And our short is to the amp and not to the power supply. So let's reconnect the capacitor and we'll see how it looks as far as charging up. That'll tell me also if the power supply is working properly. A 
Okay, meter into voltage mode. We'll turn on the power and measure the voltage. 53 volts. So the power supply is good. We'll see how this is holding that 53 volts. Looks like it's holding pretty good. So this capacitor is fine. See, the discharge is very slow. So this cap is fine. I know some people are going to say, oh, change the cap, it's bad. It's made in 1972. Yeah, well, it was also made in Canada in 1972, and they knew how to make capacitors back then. So I doubt that I need to change this. Let's uh, dig into this and find out where the short is. You guys want to see a blue spark? How much juice this sucker holds? It holds quite a bit. That's how much it holds. Cool, huh? Probably still got a bit of a kick to it. Oh yeah, still had a bit of juice. Nothing wrong with that cap. Let's check our output transistors. We've got uh, one here. Oh yeah, that was shot. And its twin, I think, is underneath here. So there'll be another twin. This resistor looks like it's kind of toasty too. Is it open? Let's see here. Maybe this resistor's gone open. I'll just check it. Oh, it's not open, but it uh, looks like it's got a bit of a crack in it, so it might need to be replaced. Let's just check it for for ohms. Yeah, 1.2. This should be like a I think 0.47. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's, maybe it's four. I was measuring one ohm as well. Hmm. So it's not open. It doesn't appear to be open. I see a little crack in it here, though, so maybe we should change that. I'm going to pull the transformer out just so I can measure the other uh, transistor that's underneath here. There's two of them under here. Right? So let's just, uh, we'll just, we'll just move this, remove this transformer. Get a quarter inch drive in there and take that out. I noticed that this wasn't tied down. I guess somebody serviced this before and they uh, didn't put that uh, that wire tie back in place. So here are the other transistors. We'll check this one too. Interesting. Yeah, that one's open. That shorted. 0 0.008. Yeah, that one's shorted. These ones here, I think, are okay. Yeah, 0.5. Yeah, ah, those ones are fine. It's just one side has gone shorted. Yeah, just these ones are bad. Short. So I need a TIP 41B and a TIP 42B. I have to look those up and see what they correspond to and whether I, I have one or not. And if not, I'll have to head down to the parts store and see if they have some generic replacements. So the TIP41B is crossed to an NTE or an ECG331 and the TIP42B is an ECG or NTE332. I'll use this DHL invoice that they sent me. The guy at the door gave me wanting to collect money for samples. Okay. Pound sound, buddy. 
I'll use this as scrap paper just to write down my part numbers. And then I gotta go look and see. I'm gonna go look through my collection first of all. I've got a bunch of semis and stuff, whether I have any suitable ones. Because this is one I can actually make some money on. It's 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 hilarious, you know, because for for years people were throwing out these big ugly consoles and but you you get the old timers that are just in love with these things because it's a real piece of furniture and of course it's kind of up to that time of year where they want to start playing the Christmas albums, the records. So, uh, you know, they probably fire this thing up once a year and they went to fire it up this year and it went boom. So uh, the, this type of thing, I can actually make some money fixing this. This old thing for, you know, people's in, people in their 90s that are just in love with those big old cabinet. And for years, we used to throw these things out, right? But all of a sudden, they've now they, now people want to collect them again. So this is our specifications for these transistors. Uh, the uh, TIP41B is the NPN, the 42B is the PNP, is the, the equivalent is an NTE331 or 332 or ECG if you want to go back far enough to the Philips ECG lineup. They have a collector to base voltage maximum rating 100 volts, collector to emitter 100 volts, emitter to base 5 volts, and dissipate 90 watts, and the emitter to collector current 15 amps and the base current 5 amps. So that's what I need to base my substitute on if I'm going to find a substitute that is going to work. So I'm going to go through my collection. I've got a bunch of drawers full of transistors. I'm going to go through and see if I can find one that is, or find two, because it's a, it's a complementary pair, that um, will be suitable. Otherwise I'll be off to the parts store to pick up some replacements. Chances are the only thing that's wrong with this is these transistors and possibly a resistor or two that's gone bad as well. But I, I got lots of resistors, so so let's uh, take it from there and uh, we'll change these parts out and uh, get this thing humming a good tune instead of a bad tune. Because right now it's it's a pretty bad tune that it hums. Well, I've got uh, a TIP 29C and a TIP 30C uh, transistor. They have a higher, at least their their sub, has a higher voltage rating, but the uh, current is not as high. Uh, these ones are only uh, dissipating 40 watts versus 90. Although, looking at this little transformer, there's no way in hell that this thing's putting out no 90 watts. This amplifier is probably putting out perhaps 20, 10 to 20 watts power because that little transformer you're not getting a lot of juice out of so I could probably sub these transistors and it, it would work just fine and uh, maybe we'll do that because uh, that way I can get this thing going and uh, then I save myself a trip into the big city to uh, replace or buy some new transistors even if they have them Sometimes you go into the shops and they don't even have them in stock. The way things are going these days, usually they don't have them in stock. Now, when you're working on something like this, it's always a good idea to make yourself a little chart and write down the colors of the wires and where they go, or take a picture of it. I drew it out on a piece of paper myself because I'm old school and uh, I don't need to take a picture of everything. But uh, anyway, um, as long as you remember which wires go where for your basing, because if you hook it up wrong, you're gonna have uh, some magic smoke. And we don't want magic smoke, especially on something this old, where some of the components could be getting hard to get. That damn eagle, you know, it's here year round. It's still squeaking every so often. You'll hear it. There it is. See it? Hear it? So the resistors are disconnected as well. These are 0.47 as this yellow violet silver. So that's 47 and divide by 100. So 0.47. It you see my meter's battery is weak on my meter. I'll have to change my battery here.
I can measure it with my Bohm's meter though, which is my ESR meter. It will measure low ohms on resistors, so let's just grab that. Because ESR will measure, ESR meters will measure low ohms resistance as well. Zero out the zero it out. Okay, so it should be 0.47 ohms. Close enough. And let's look at this one over here. Uh, this one's going a little bit high, isn't it? 0.52. This one's starting to go high and it's got a crack in it, so I should probably change that one out. It probably would work though, because it's you know it's it's close, but We'll change out that resistor. Uh, I'm sure I've got one. All right, let's get the new transistors in place. They're not tight anyway, so it's no big deal. So this is the NPN transistor here, and it has the mounting hardware with the, the plastic insulator that has to go on to the new one. So here are my two transistors. This one's the NPN. The basing is the same, base collector emitter. And these are shorted um, emitter collector. If we look at the bad ones, you'll see this is an NPN, so if I put the positive on the base, it actually measures good. Right? Junction's good there. Well, junction's sort of good. But if I go emitter to collector, it's shorted. So here's my replacement. Right? Those are my two good junctions, and then of course emitter to collector, it's open. Because that's a good transistor. These didn't have much in the way of heat sink compound. I'll put a little bit of my silicone heat sink compound on here to drain away the heat. Okay, get some heat sink compound on the back of the, the transistor. I'm going to put the Insulator through here.
So I'm going to take this resistor out. Looks like this was changed once before, doesn't it? Yeah, you can definitely see there's a, a crack. I don't know if, you, if the camera will pick up on it, but it should. See there's a crack right there. So I'm going to put two 1 ohm resistors in parallel. That will give me uh, about 0.47 or 0.5. It's a 0.47 it's supposed to be. It's got me down at like 0.5, which should be close enough. Same as the other one here that's got the crack in it, right? Although this one here, it may change if I flex it because it's cracked. Anyway, this one's probably okay. It does have a crack in it, though. So, I don't have a 0.47, so I'll make one up. There we go. So, that will do the job. Just around there. And now the transformer goes back in place.
And what's really funny on this one is um, the people that own this unit bought it from the shop that I worked for for 20 years, long before I worked there. So the guy that would have worked on this thing back in the day when it needed to be serviced would have either been the guy that I work for. Uh, probably not though. I don't think he was doing it then. He might have been or just learning it. Probably his dad. His dad started the business and it probably was his dad that did it. And then his son took over the business in uh, I guess it was the late the business was started in like 1965 I think it was 65 and the son took over the business in the late I think it was the late so I joined the company in 84 when I left Sony but uh, I think it was the late 70s when the son took over the business and um, and this came from apparently this came from the shop according to the people that own it they said they got it from the place that I used to work at for many many years I guess it's time to uh, plug this thing in and see if it goes boom I guess we'll find out pretty quick it's gonna work where's the FM on this thing I can't play that. I'll find something that I can play. Here we go, I can play this. We'll clean the uh, controls. Let me get some uh, control cleaner down. We'll give the controls a shot. say let me get some more cleaner in there but I would say this is a success now I get to take it back and install it back in the cabinet anyway um, thanks for watching the repair of this vintage old RCA Q100 console system there's the tuner you notice that the AM tuner is a the AM tuner is a regular tuning capacitor. The FM tuner, it's a, a varactor, it looks like. It's just a variable resistor. They're using a varactor tuner for the FM on this, which at the time would be quite advanced. Neat, huh? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.